Hey guys, how's it going? So today I wanted to make a video explaining what the girl's genetic metabolic disorder is and what our plan of treatment is. I wanted to make this video so that it could be its own separate thing because I keep referring people back to a pregnancy update, my 12 week one I think, and I just think that this certain topic deserves its own video, so that's why I'm making this. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it. My girls have a genetic metabolic disorder, it's called VLCAD, V-L-C-A-D-D. -D. It stands for a very long chain acidophilus disorder, or acidophilus, I can never say that word right. And basically what it means is that my girls, um, the mitochondria in their cell is not absorbing a very long chain fatty acid called carnitine very well. And I'm just repeating to you verbatim what the genesis told me because that's all I can do. <laughs> I'm not a doctor or anything. So I'm just repeating to you what he told me. And because their bodies are not absorbing carnitine very well, the cell, their cells are going elsewhere to get it. Because carnitine is not something that our bodies make by itself. It's something that we have to get from food. We first found out about this, uh, it was Carly's newborn screen. It came back as abnormal for a certain fatty acid that they apparently check for in the newborn screen. I didn't know everything that they checked, but apparently they checked this. And it came back abnormal. So the poor girl got stuck four different times, I think it was, to get uh, her newborn screen redone. Two of those times they had messed up the transporting of it. So. The poor kid had to get stuck four times. But anyway, finally they said, okay, we're just going to send her to see a specialist. And that's how we ended up with a geneticist. At the geneticist, he confirmed, because we did blood work, that yeah, she does have VLCAD. By this time, Carly was like, I want to say eight or nine months old. I, I want to I say it was about that. Um, I can't remember exactly how old she was, but I think she was about eight, nine months old, and I was already pregnant with McKinley. And he told me that uh, our girls are not, well, Carly at, at the time, he told me that Carly was not a severe case, because if she would have been a severe case, then she would be having like really bad problems. She would be going into coma because her body would be attacking the sug her sugar, and she would be very hypoglycemic, and she would be going into comas, she'd be having seizures. It would. It's just kids who have this, have like really bad si symptoms and things that are wrong. He told me that they can also have things wrong with their heart. That is the main thing that could be wrong with children who have VLCAD. They could have valve problems. They could have arrhythmia problems. There's like a lot of problems that can go on with the heart. And he told me that because Carly is not a failure to thrive, she was gaining weight good, she was hitting her milestones good, like everything was good, that she most likely was a very mild case. And she is. Then McKinley came along and I had some questions because McKinley was not gaining weight like Carly was and she was uh, strictly breastfed. Uh, Carly wasn't. I just wasn't as educated at the time. But I was very educated by the time I got to McKinley and she was not gaining weight very well at all. And I asked, you know, about it. And he told me that VLCAD is similar to autism in the sense that it presents itself differently in every kid. There's varying degrees of this. Some kids are really mild some kids are really severe. It just depends on the child. Some children develop muscle weakness, which is what McKinley developed. Um, the cells in her body, because they're not absorbing carnitine, they've attacked her muscle legs. And that's why she's been late on pretty much every physical milestone. It's why she didn't sit up until she was about seven and a half months old. She didn't crawl until like two or three weeks before her first birthday. She's just now starting to kind of get the hang of walking and she's 16 months old. We were projecting that she probably wouldn't walk until about 18 months um, and this is why. It's because she's muscle weak from having VLCAD and it's just something that we have to continue therapy with because of that. So far all we know about Andy is that she probably has it. That's all we know. Because Devin and I are both carriers of it, uh, all of our children are most likely going to get this. He said that there's a chance, a rare chance, but there is a chance that Devin and I could have a baby that is just a carrier. They will also come back on the newborn screen as abnormal, but when they actually get tested for the VLCAT itself, they won't be, a, they won't have it. Um, he just said they'll be a carrier, but it's not likely. He said most likely, I'll give you nine times out of ten, you're gonna have a baby who has VLCAD. Carly and Kinley are not severe cases, but their cases separately are different. McKinley has muscle weakness and Carly has troubles with her sugar. 
McKinley doesn't have problems with her sugar. Carly has never had problems with muscle weakness. But thankfully, my kids have only been hospitalized one time because of VLCAD. And children who have severe cases of this are hospitalized way more than that. <laughs> um, so I'm very, very thankful that my kids' cases are mild. Carly got hospitalized because her sugar was at 60, and I was told that if her sugar is at 60 or below, to take her to the hospital because she's so little that her sugar could drop really fast, and that's not a chance we want to take because she'd go into coma and it would just be bad news. So Carly went one time because her sugar was low enough and McKinley only went that one time because she got sick and she wasn't eating very properly. I was afraid that she's gonna get dehydrated because the other thing with VLCAD is that when children don't eat for a while, like when they sleep at night, uh, their sugar drops. And that's why sometimes my kids sleep a little bit longer <laughs> than what would deem like normal. Like for instance, uh, Carly and McKinley go to bed anywhere between 9 and 9.15 at night and they'll wake up. Here lately it's been between like 10.30, 10.45, which is really late for them. But uh, this morning it was like 9, so that was really good. But uh, so sometimes it's like 10.30, 10.45. And I do have some cases where Carly will sleep until 11. And I'm not kidding. And I have to go wake her up because she's been asleep for 14 hours. And I just don't want her to sleep any more than that because I don't want her to get a problem. And she hasn't eaten. And it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> and half the day's gone. You, you know what I mean? It's just I don't let her sleep past that. As far as treatment goes, he told me that it's a little bit tricky because you can give a child with VLCAD lots and lots of carnitine. But that doesn't mean that their body is going to absorb it any better. So really the only hope is to do just that. Just fill their bodies with a bunch of carnitine and just pray and hope that their bodies absorb as much of it as possible. He said that's really all that we can do because there is no real cure. So we have been waiting on insurance to approve us for about two years and they still have it because they're super, super slow. But uh, that's the treatment that he wants to go forward with and that's what we're waiting on. And the girls just had EKGs and echoes done because the biggest problem with VLCAD is that my girls, he told me it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, they are eventually going to develop a heart problem. Because they have VLCAD, because the, the cells in their body are basically getting it elsewhere, it eventually eats up muscle and they're going to develop a problem. He just said, it's a matter of time. So my children are like little ticking time bombs is what he told me, like word for word. <laughs> and I was like, oh gosh, okay. Um, he said, we don't know what the problem is going to be. It could be a murmur, which is what they have right now, which is very mild. A lot of people have murmurs. It could be a valve problem. It could be an arrhythmia problem. It could be who knows what. We really don't know what the problem is going to eventually be. And it could be at any time. It could be five months from now, five years from now, 20 years from now. We really just don't know. It's something that we just have to watch and wait for and catch it as early as possible because the earlier you can catch it, the better you can treat it. And as a mom, yes, that is very nerve wracking. It is just a little bit panic filled because every six months I have to take my kids to geneticist and they have to get checked on. And, and now we have a cardiologist that's on our team to check her heart and just to monitor the girls and everything. And it is a little bit it, just a little bit um, nerve-wracking because you just don't know when you're going to get that hey there's something wrong but I really do have a lot of hope and um, a lot of faith that it's not going to be for a while because their cases are so mild my girls aren't having um, seizures they're not going into comas they're not failure to thrives um, because they're not having si signs and symptoms of children with severe cases I'm really not that worried that it's going to be anytime soon but at the same time, I don't know that. Like, I don't know that for sure. I just try to have as much faith and hope as possible. So that is all for this video. I just wanted to really quickly tell you guys the girl's genetic metabolic disorder and what was going on. So later on when Andy gets here, I won't have to keep referring people to a pregnancy update. So if you guys have any other questions, just drop me a comment down below and I will certainly answer it. And I will see you guys tomorrow in a new vlog. Bye.